We are going to continue with our next speaker, Daniel Rabin. Make some noise, y'all. Daniel Rabin, make some noise, y'all. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Pretty good? Yeah. All right. So, uh, I've never done this before, but I just spontaneously volunteered. So, I play in a fusion band called Marvin. And we play instrumental music, and we made a resolution that we're gonna name all of our songs to commemorate nights we barely survived on the road. So I'm gonna tell you the story of Magic Oro. So this took place in Taos, New Mexico in 2012. We were playing this place called the Mesa Brewing Company in the middle of the desert. So we finished playing our first set, and this lady comes to the merch table. Her name is Double D. That's how she introduces herself. She's about 60 years old, and she's like, may I please have an album? And she's holding $200 bills, separate. As a musician, you don't see a lot of those at all. We're just, uh, oh, okay. She is out of touch with money. She has no idea what money means. So she goes like, hey, uh, do you guys have a place to crash tonight? And we're like, no, no, what do you got? And she's like, well, I have 26 extra bedrooms. <laughs> all right, we're listening, you know? So she's like, okay, I gotta go now before your last set, but follow the bartender home. He's my boy toy. And we're like, cool, right? So her, his name is Magic Boro. That's his name, right? He's an aspiring Latino rapper. He's 21 years old, and he knows the way. So now, I gotta tell you about our drummer. Our drummer was a beautiful black man with an eight pack and muscles. He would bang everybody all the time. 40 days tour, 40 houses, right? Just like off the charts, just slinging it, right? So anyways, there's this hippie chick standing right at the audience, right? And he's like, uh-huh, the whole set, he's like drumming, looking at her, and we're like, okay, it's going down. We didn't know that her bus, the busser in the place was her son. So after our show, he takes off with this lady, and the guy's like, where's my mom? And so we're like, we know where your mom is, dude. That's shit, okay. So anyway, he comes back, right? And the mom promises just, oh, uh, the drummer, um, she promises the drummer a plant of weed, right? So we take off out of this like, you know, place in the desert in a convoy. It's hippie chick with like busser son, us, and then Magic Borrow, just driving through the desert, right? So they take a left, and there's no road. It's just like the desert in New Mexico. And we're like, okay, you know, and we're just like, there's no electricity, it's a shanty town, and we're driving for miles, right? And all of a sudden, you start seeing these like dimly lit hippie shacks, and this, this bitch lives in a bus, right? Like a school bus. And right by the bus, there's a little teepee where the kid lives, right? And they go in there, and they pull out a whole, like, not a bag of weed, a tree of weed, and they just give it like a Christmas tree, right? They give it to us. And we get back, we're like, all right, fine. So we start like following Magic Boro out of there. So we're driving through the desert, right? And we get to this place called the Double D Ranch. It's spelled with golden letters, right? And we're driving for miles inside the property. And all of a sudden, we see peacocks, right? And there's a fucking giraffe. Like a, gi a, a real giraffe just hanging out, right? And we get into this mansion, and the couches are half Rolls Royce, half couch. Half Lamborghini, half couch. We're like, what country is this, you know? Apparently this lady is like the niece of the guy who owns Shell, and this was a birthday present for her. She was very wealthy. There's a sushi chef. He's cooking shit, right? Just chopping shit up. And we're like, this is like not real, right? So anyway, we're hanging out on the porch. We're hanging out with Magic Boro, the guy that got us there, right? And Magic Boro is just talking shit, right? Like, Double D is in there. And, you know, since our rhythm section is black, he's trying to, like, impress them, because he's like, you know, I don't know, I think something, when, you, when you're an aspiring hip-hop artist, there's, like, a part of your brain that's, like, impress the black folks, right? So, you know, he's just trying to be like, oh, I don't care about that bitch. It's, like, just money, like, blah, 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 blah. You know, just talking shit. And we're like, this is not so cool, but we're, like, smoking this, like, Christmas bush. We're like, okay, we're gonna see what's happening. <laughs> So, you know, anyway, she like, she like calls him, she's like, magic! And he just runs inside to do his deed. Like, eight minutes later, he's back, talking shit, right? Didn't stop, didn't take a breath. He's like, I don't give a shit, like blah, 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 you know, just talking like that. So anyway, our drummer just, 
a drummer, uh, goes to the bathroom, right? And we're all just hanging out. And all of a sudden, we start hearing this thing after 10 minutes. Sounds like this. And we're just like, oh, shit. And, you know, Magic Bro is just still in this crazy-ass rant. Just like, I don't give a shit. Like, bitch is money. Like, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, he hears it. And he's like, oh, my God. And he runs inside, and he gets envious. He sees our drummer, ass in the air, in the deep. So that's the story of Magic Boro. He just took off in the desert, and we just continued on tour. Thank you.